I see comments like this all the time on my videos, my posts, other people's videos, all over PC building, subreddits, everything. And it shows an almost understanding of a topic that's close enough that it's almost taken as kind of like a, a, a common wisdom type of thing where CPU performance doesn't matter so much for 4K gaming. And that's not true, okay? It's just not. Now, it's almost true. It's sort of true. If you mean a certain thing by it, it might be true. But this comment is, is uh, first of all, uh, don't feel bad if that was you in the comment section. It's a learning opportunity and it's mostly makes sense, okay? I'm gonna clarify some, some subtle misunderstandings here. This was a comment in regards to my post talking about Dragon's Dogma 2 performance being heavily CPU limited. And so then the question was, well, is this going to happen at 4K? Now, some of you who know even less about this, because this is one of those topics where it's like, some people know just enough to get themselves into trouble. So this poster obviously understands something, which is that oftentimes at 4K resolution, you are more GPU limited than you are CPU limited. Therefore, the question, is this going to apply uh, at to 4K as well? Meaning the resolution could impact whether or not you are CPU limited. And then the, the reply uh, was probably not. Since CPU usage is at its minimal stage in 4K, even if it heavily relies on uh, single core performance on 4K, it won't matter anyways. And that's wrong. It's also kind of right, but it's, it, it's, it's wrong enough that I'm making a video, not just to talk about these particular comments, but in general, a misunderstanding of how uh, resolution impacts uh, uh, and CPU performance kind of impact each other, how you should think about those when you're planning a PC build. And if you are planning your PC build, you should absolutely take a look at today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, where I can get you $10 off your first purchase if you use code OWEN10, following the link in the video description and or pinned comment. Now, Jawa is awesome uh, for, uh, uh, for planning out your, your next build and looking for the best deals. First of all, you can search listings and a bunch of them are used listings. And honestly, guys, especially in the graphics card market, uh, some of the best deals can absolutely be found on the used market. But not only that, you can help fund your upgrade by selling your hardware on Java. You can list it yourself, setting your own price, managing the listing. Uh, but if you're selling your GPU, you can actually get an instant cash offer uh, to uh, like take all of the hassle out of the situation. Uh, but also they offer uh, uh, total pre-built systems at a wide variety of price points. Uh, so if you're getting overwhelmed by planning all of your own PC build and all of that, uh, grabbing one of these pre-builds totally takes um, you know, you know, the hassle out of that. There you go and you can get some great deals. And not only that, uh, to help you plan plan it out, you could uh, take a look at their Discord. It had over 10,000 members last time I checked, and that'd be a great way to get kind of that one-on-one -on -one feedback that you're looking for when you're planning out a PC build. So definitely follow the link in the video description and or pinned comment to check out, ja out jawa.gg to both sell uh, and buy and plan out your build. Uh, and again, use code OWEN10 to get $10 off that first purchase. But when you're planning out that build, again, you need to be thinking about the CPU. So let's get back to this topic. So actually, you know what? Today, there was a really interesting video from Hardware Unbox. I think I still have it in my browser tab. So I'm actually gonna pull this up because I think this gives a perfect uh, illustration of what I'm talking about, where you could, could get the impression that gaming at 4K doesn't, uh, the CPU doesn't really matter very much. Um, but again, I think we can also use this to show why that's not necessarily true. We can see both things here. This is uh, the Hardware Unboxed video uh, just published today as of the time of filming, how slow is the Ryzen 5 5600 for 2024 gaming. Uh, so there's a lot going on in this graph and I'm just showing you their results for Starfield. They tested a bunch of different games and they have average results. I don't wanna use all of their results in this video and we're kind of talking about a slightly different topic anyway but we can use this information on this slide uh, to really get into it. So what am I talking about here? So first of all, there's a lot going on. They're testing out uh, a, a few different CPUs. We're seeing the 7800X3D, the Ryzen 5 5600, which is an older generation and more of a mid-tier rather than high-end CPU. 
Uh, the, then they're tape, testing out the same C, uh, the 7800X 3D again, but with a different GPU, this time with the 4070 Ti, here was with the 4080. Uh, then we see a Ryzen 5 7600, so a mid-range, but a newer generation than the Ryzen 5 5600. And then we see the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D again, but this time paired with an even lower-end CPU. Then we, the, they tested a bunch of games. I'm just showing you the Starfield slide. This will be different game by game. Uh, and we're seeing three different resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and all of these are at ultra quality. So what can we get out of this? So I think one of the most interesting things to look at here is um, when you're looking at the same CPU, but with different graphics cards, but then also looking at different CPUs uh, with the same graphics card. So we have like an RTX 4080, for example, as a high-end GPU being paired with a 7800X 3D, which is your highest end gaming CPU out there right now. Um, and then you have the Ryzen 5 5600, which is a decent mid-range CPU from the previous generation, right? And you can tell at 1080p resolution using the same graphics card, but with a different CPU, there's a massive performance difference there. But if we look at 4K resolution, there's only a very small difference using the same GPU, different CPUs, very small difference. And this is exactly what people are talking about when they say that the CPU doesn't really matter when you're gaming at 4K. But that statement by itself without any nuance is definitely wrong, okay? So let's look at this a little bit closer. And let's also look at resolutions like 1440p. So at 1440p, once again, looking at the 4080 on the Ryzen 5 5600 and on the 7800X 3D, uh, we can see once again at 1440p, uh, the 7800X 3D is performing a lot better on the 4080 uh, than it is on, on, on the 5600. But again, we're seeing less differences than we are here. But what I really want to draw your attention to is actually the frame rates um, for the Ryzen 5 5600 at 1440p and at 1080p. They're basically the same within one or two FPS of each other. And that's the important distinction. Because what's going on is that the CPU just doesn't really care what the resolution is. In the vast majority of games, the kind of work that the CPU is doing is not very resolution dependent. Now, sometimes you'll get games where maybe they're gonna be drawing in certain things at a higher resolution that it wouldn't be drawing in at a lower resolution and it can have some impacts. But in general, the work a CPU does when rendering a game is just not very uh, impacted by the resolution the game is rendering at. And so the CPU can basically reach a certain frame rate in the game. In, and, in this per and also the scene of the game matters quite a bit. So in this particular scene that Hardware Unboxed is testing, we're seeing that the Ryzen 5 5600 is able to hit a little over a 70 FPS average, and the 1% lows are closer to 60. And that's true regardless of the resolution. When we move to 4K resolution, notice that the overall frame rate that the RTX 4080 is able to reach is below those numbers, which is why the CPU is no longer really impacting the performance in any meaningful way. It's because the overall performance of the game on the graphics card um, just cannot reach the maximum frame rate the CPU is able to reach, which is not really impacted by the frame rate at all. Uh, sorry, not by the frame rate at all. It was not impacted by the resolution at all. So what we're seeing is that the actual true statement is that CPUs are good for a certain frame rate in any given game, in any given scene of that game. And that the rendering resolution of the game is basically irrelevant. So where do we get, the, so where we get the statement that the CPU doesn't matter very much at 4K resolution is looking at things like this, where because 4K, the rendering resolution does increase the workload on the GPU by a massive amount. So by increasing the rendering resolution, uh, the traditional narrative is you're then just going to become GPU limited rather than CPU limited, so it doesn't matter which CPU you have, and this seems to support that, right? But here's the thing. Very few people nowadays 
are playing 4K resolution at an actual native 4K resolution. At least in demanding new AAA games, like Starfield, for example. I would be shocked if a high percentage of RTX 4080 users, for example, since we're looking at that data here, are playing Starfield at 4K Ultra without kicking on DLSS, at least at the quality setting, if not more aggressively. And here's the thing, DLSS quality is actually rendering 4K at 1440p resolution. It's rendering the game at 1440p resolution. And if you go down to DLSS performance, it's rendering at 1080p resolution, which means that if you were actually playing this game on an RTX 4080 on these two different CPUs, you would likely actually be seeing results more like this or even like this, which means if you're adjusting your graphic settings in the game to achieve a certain frame rate target, the graphic settings in the game mostly scale on the GPU, not on the CPU. Certain graphic settings can be very heavy on the CPU, uh, especially ray tracing. But most graphic settings um, mostly scale on the GPU side of things. So if you're reducing graphic settings, you're reducing your GPU bottleneck, especially if you're lowering the rendering resolution by using something like DLSS or FSR or XESS upscaling. And by doing that, you are then going to be trying to achieve higher frame rates, which your lower end CPU might not be able to do. See what I'm saying here? So what I'm getting at is, in general, I really think that the common wisdom should be a certain CPU is gonna be good for a certain maximum frame rate and in a given game and in a given scene, right? And so if you want to achieve high frame rates, you do need a better CPU regardless of if you're playing at 4K resolution, because you will be adjusting graphic settings for your graphics card to achieve high frame rates and your CPU can't keep up. Uh, you know, it won't scale the same way the GPU does with those graphic settings changes. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so in other words, you would likely actually see results more like this if you're adjusting uh, graphic settings to more optimized uh, settings rather than just cranking everything to ultra. Um, also, to get back to the original question here well, that, that inspired this video, which was talking about Dragon's Dogma 2 specifically, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 absolutely is uh, CPU limited even at 4K resolution. Uh, and uh, Gamers Nexus did an excellent video testing out a bunch of CPUs in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, to be clear, like I said, the actual scene of the game that you're in matters quite a bit. So uh, in, in the big city environments, in other words, when there's lots of NPCs on scene, the, the CPU in, in a lot of games is doing work like uh, like uh, like NPC logic and physics and things like that. So in, in Dragon's Dogma 2, it's looking like when the CPU has a lot of NPCs to deal with, performance tanks dramatically regardless of uh, how good your CPU is, to be honest. Like, it does matter. But look at the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. That would be the lowest 1% of frames if we're talking about the 1% lows. Or in other words, um, it'd be the worst, like, frame time spikes that you would get. It would feel very stuttery. Because if you're averaging around 86, but frame rates drop into the 20s or 30s on a regular basis, that's gonna feel very juddery. It's gonna feel very unsmooth. And what I want you to notice is that the best gaming CPUs on the planet have 1% lows down into the 20s and 30s. And remember, your CPU is good for a certain frame rate. So even though this testing was done at 1080p resolution, even if this testing was done at 4K resolution, and even if you adjusted graphic settings down, or uh, used DLSS or FSR upscaling to drop that internal rendering resolution. That's gonna relieve the burden on the GPU, not the CPU. Uh, and so you will still get spikes this low. So if the person asking this question, is the CPU bottleneck gonna apply at 4K? If you were planning on playing above 25 frames per second, it applies because that's what we're seeing here as far as the lowest frame time dips. So you would have to be playing at a frame rate below the minimum frame rates to get a smooth experience. And again, I don't think people are gonna be targeting that regardless of what re uh, monitor resolution they purchased. So hopefully this made sense. The overall summary is 
that yes, increasing the rendering resolution does increase the GPU workload, which can lead to a GPU bottleneck. But if you then reduce graphics settings and rendering resolution using upscaling to target a certain frame rate, then it kind of didn't matter any, then, then really what matters is what is the maximum frame rate your, C, your CPU is able to achieve. And what we're seeing here is that that's actually gonna be limited, uh, more, more looking like these results when you're actually looking at, at playing at realistic optimized settings. So your CPU can achieve a certain frame rate regardless of the rendering resolution. Um, and that's kind of the point of the video here. Hopefully it made sense. Uh, and again, as you're planning your upgrade, don't forget to check out jawa.gg and uh, save $10 off your first purchase using code OWEN10. Huge thank you to channel viewers, subscribers, commenters, because again, uh, I do read uh, most of the comments and sometimes pop in for a reply like I eventually did on this one to try to clarify some of that. And I know this was a bit of a rambly sort of video, but hopefully you guys found it uh, useful and or interesting. Uh, huge thank you also to channel uh, uh, members who have clicked the join button to directly support the channel financially. You get little membership badges in the comment section it makes it me uh, a little easier for me to find your comments, by the way. And occasionally I post some videos, early access um, and, and things like that as well for channel members. And totally understand not everybody can afford to do that. Totally fine. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.